Oh, it's a great rental program, and almost all of the sales that we do are through the rental program. Uh, unless someone has units already they're very happy with, and they'll just buy the new ones flat out. But what we do is we have a try-to-buy program. And what we do is it's a rental of $300 a month. We do require that you keep the unit for three months because that's plenty of opportunity to really see how well our device works. Once that period is over and you decide to purchase the unit, every dollar of the rental will go towards the purchase price of the unit. And what I can tell you, Bruce, is that 85% of the people out there who rent them wind up buying them. And kind of personally, as a sales guy, I love that number. 85% close rate makes me very happy. Yeah, that's great. And how about if whether I bought or whether I rented, tell me a little bit about how do I know what's the right size unit, and, and not to get into all the technical information right here, but how do we decide what's the right size, wh what, where should it be located, um, those type of things, what kind of power requirements, are those easily determined by either Weeders Digest that can provide the information or your organization that we can um, help the people decide what size unit, where to put it, and what the effects will be? Oh, it's very straightforward. It's just not confusing at all. First of all, from a power perspective, um, you can run 110 house current out to the device. Our power supply is going to knock it down to 24 volts and then send 24 volts into the unit in the water. If you are a commercial application and you've got 220 nearby, plug it into the 220. We'll, we'll give you a different attachment, obviously. But plug it into the 220, knocks down to 24, and out it goes into the water. As far as placement in the pond, the device is a line of sight uh, type of device where when you put it in the water, you want the face of the transducer, which is you know, marked. It's not a big deal to figure out which end is which. Um, if that transducer can see the water, so to speak, it can control the algae in that area. So put it into a corner where you can point it out and it has the maximum coverage. Off the face of the transducer, you're looking about 170 degrees off that flat face that will be going out into the water. So point it out towards the majority of the water and just know that when it goes out, it'll be able to cover the rest of it. As far as sizing it, if you're looking at somebody who has a pond at their house um, who does not have a nutrient feed, such as a, a golf course uses a lot of fertilizer, uh, wastewater lagoons, of course, have a lot of nutrients in the water. But if it's your average pond at someone's house and you're looking for some coverage, rule of thumb, would be that we have a model SS500 that could cover up to three acres, and that goes for $3,995. If you have something smaller than that, we have what we call the SS400, which could cover up to two acres, and that would go for $2,495. Then we have smaller units also as you get down to like koi pond sizes, about a quarter of an acre. If you have a golf course and you're listening to this recording um, and you have a larger pond, <coughs> excuse me, we have our SS600. And the SS600 goes for, I can take a swallow. Yeah, yeah I, I better fill in here for a moment. Um, one of the things as you're talking about the power that I'd like you to come back to, only for just a moment, is that we talk about the U.S. power, um, but you've also got other uh, requirements for around the world. And, of course, I think most of our listeners would probably assume that this would only be uh, this information would only be picked up here locally in um, in the United States. But I can also tell you that uh, yesterday we shipped to Scotland. Um, today we answered a question about this very product from uh, Manila in the Philippines. And um, Kirk, you've told me a little bit about just your worldwide sales, and so much beyond the the U.S. Uh, there's a lot of activity out there, a lot of interest. But just to clarify that, the, the power requirements, you've got setups for uh, the different countries and, and different electrical needs, correct? You give me plenty of time to recover myself, Bruce. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I want to answer the question I gagged on before this I... Is, this is a live show, as they say. <laughs> the tape, there's no tape delay here. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, for larger commercial applications, be they a larger golf pond or be they for a wastewater lagoon, we have our SS600, which is our biggest and most powerful unit, and that goes for $4,495. Getting back to the power now, we ship them all over the world. We have a very good dealer in Australia who does a great business with us. Uh, we've sold them into Canada, uh, a lot of the European community. Uh, we just set up a brand-new dealer in the Netherlands. And I'm working with a deal with a guy right now who's going to be selling into Africa. 
So if you tell us where you are, what the power is, and what the shape of the plug that we need to put on it is, we can do it. Okay. Not a big deal whatsoever. There's no extra charge for something like that. Well, I think one of the keys that I've learned is that it's not about the the, the power to the unit in the water is always going to be the same. And so okay. um, regardless of what uh, the particular country's needs are, um, it's really not about the unit. It's about the power cord and the adapter outside of the water. You're 100% right. And one th also on that, um, there is a solar option too. Is that correct? Yes, there is. We realize and recognize that not all ponds happen to be near electricity. It was very observant of us. Uh, and there are solar options, depending upon uh, whether you pick up the SS 400, 500, or 600. We do have solar options available so that you don't need to um, run extension cords for half a mile to get power somewhere. Okay. Um, thinking through a couple of my other notes. Um, tell me about uh, long-term uh, you say you've been in business for four years, five years, mm -hmm. something like that. Mm -hmm. 500 units are out there. Yep. Uh, failure rates, uh, maybe that's not a good way to put it, but how about maintenance issues, and how long can I expect that the life expectancy of this would be? Well, first of all, the maintenance is, is very straightforward in observing it. Um, what we have is we have two lights that are on our power supply. Um, every time the unit in the water receives electricity, it sends a signal back up the line saying, I got electricity. So basically one light on our power supply should be on all the time. Every time the unit in the water creates and sends out an ultrasonic signal, it also sends an impulse up a third wire, and the second light on the power supply blinks. So from a, you know, is it working perspective, you know, is it physically working, you can go look at the power supply box. One green light should be on all the time, and the light right above it should be blinking. When you see that, you know the unit's receiving power. The unit is creating and sending out an, ultrason an ultrasonic signal. So, yes, it's working. And maintenance really is very, very low key. What we recommend is that you put the unit in as soon as the ice melts, take it out before the ice freezes over, and besides that, pretty much just leave it in the water and let it run 24-7. Again, 0 0.4 amps is the draw, so it's not going to draw very much electricity whatsoever. And depending on your pond, if it's a place that has historically had a fair amount of algae, once a month you may want to pull the unit out of the water and uh, just see if the face needs to be wiped off or something like that. And that's pretty much it from a maintenance perspective. Failure rates, um, and we've got, we've been in business for four years. We have units that we sold our first year that are still out there chugging away. And I think maybe we may have had uh, far less than half a dozen. I would say probably about three or four units we've had to bring back in. Uh, and we've swapped those out entirely with no questions asked whatsoever. Uh, the unit does come with a two-year full warranty. And we have a life expectancy to the unit of, we're saying, eight to ten years. Okay. That's what we fully expect it to last. Okay. Um, one of the things now, not that I would anticipate there'd be a problem, but you make a good point. How could you ever know that it's working or not working? The lights obviously are the indicator, but in the actual water, you're not seeing any, you're not hearing anything. There's not a bubbling. There's, there's no uh, obvious um, sign that this is out there other than it's floating in the water. Correct. Correct. If you were to just walk up to the pond, see the device, and look at it without looking at the power supply and seeing the lights blinking, you could not tell if it was working or not. The way that you would tell is by the lack of algae. Quite frankly, that's how you tell. And just one quick anecdotal story is that um, if any of your listeners happen to be in an environment where the water does not freeze over, by all means, leave the device in year-round, 24-7, just let that sucker go. Um, we've got customers who use it in, um, in, pri in prized trout ponds, where people pay to come and catch big fish. Um, we've got decorative ponds where they don't freeze over and they leave the device running all the time. And I get communications back from these people.